feel sorry for yourself and uh, just get on with it. And then I put my Manic Street Preachers tape on and I was absolutely flying. Had a bit of an argument with uh, Georges for running the centre road again. Oh. Latvian twat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to do one? <laughs> oh, no, I broke the camera. <laughs> Paul? <laughs> she's starring a porno in Iron Knob. <laughs> Where do you think it goes That more, looked more like bloody, um, Blumange and Iron. <laughs> um, where was I? Has <laughs> he got clothes on yet? Goat. Once through Port Augusta, we headed towards the city of Adelaide. It started to become a lot hillier, but the stunning scenery made the miles pass just that little bit quicker. By this stage, though, our bodies had become quite accustomed to the rigours of running so far each day. But our minds were longing for the Pacific Ocean and then Canberra four days after that. But that elusive finish was too far away to even contemplate at that stage. It was just a case of putting one foot in front of the other and blocking out all thoughts of the finish from our weary heads. What's your comment on your arm? Um, Bob is a slob. <laughs> can do the job. <laughs> now he just needs to get up here. We're going to Adelaide, Chris. 30 case for Adelaide. What do you think of the traffic? Shit house! It was very strange to be around all that traffic after the wonderful remoteness of the Nullarbor. I'd really enjoyed my time out there. Life was simple. There was no decision to be made. We just ran and then rested. It was so peaceful. It was hard to be returning to civilization. It was as though we didn't fit in any longer. Just about about me. <laughs> I think it's time to shave your chest again. <laughs> <laughs> I did that about a week ago. A week? Yeah, seriously. All right. 
I've just got a little range. They're not so big. It's even much bigger. Is that good or bad? Thank you. Depends. Yeah, these guys cleaned up my car before we left. All right. Let's That's how much energy they have. In Adelaide, the girls from the Australian Institute of Sport came again to test our blood. I'm sure they fancied me. They were testing to see whether we had become deficient in important minerals and vitamins. Amazingly, my levels were fine, unlike poor Georges, who was dangerously deficient right across the board. The Victorian cricket team. All oh, right, okay. Some of those guys have played for Australia. All right. So we're possibly meeting up with them tonight. Ah. You be, beware of cricketers. Yes, you're They're worse than ultra runners. <laughs> <laughs> Especially ones that have been out in the desert for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll get you to hold that for me, Will. <laughs> I feel a pulse there. You feel a pulse? You should We were soon out of the city, into the Adelaide Hills and towards the Grampians and Melbourne. The scenery was spectacular and I tried to savour every single minute. With each day I became increasingly more relaxed. Each day my confidence increased because it meant I was another day closer to the finish. At the start of the race I would thought it near impossible that I could ever finish, but my mind and body had been strong up to that point. And after what happened to Brian, there was no way on earth I would ever quit. But there was still trouble in the camp, with a lot of the runners still not happy with the organisation. It's not only me, 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 because I've got to run it. Because I'll tell you right here and now, given the choice of organising a single bloody running, and I know which is the easier path, and I'll swap places with anyone. We were slowly moving towards the Pacific. We couldn't smell the ocean yet, but we could imagine it. But it was too dangerous to think about it for too long. Anything could happen. Right. <laughs> 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 a new friend, just met him on the road. He was chasing after the Russians. Apparently there's a gate open. It was still desperately hard, the aches and pains, the boredom and self-doubt, the extreme fatigue. But I knew I must keep going for myself, for my family, for Brian's memory. Pain is temporary, pride is forever. For every low point, there would also be an equal high, a time of feeling at one with nature, a time for reflecting on the uniqueness and glory in competing in the toughest endurance race in the world. I was going to say conquering the toughest endurance race in the world, but you don't conquer a race like this. You treat it with the respect it deserves. If you don't, it could come back and hurt you. They're not all big. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't get any close-ups, Chris. Uh, I have to use the zoom. Yeah. Okay. Hold your lunchbox this one, don't I? Yeah. What are you doing there, Bob? <laughs> What's that? Well, this we call a bit of chafing. <laughs> what I did was silly enough to shave my bi <laughs> 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 my bikini line. <laughs> right, yeah. do you want me to let my hand go? No, please don't. <laughs> and now I've got infected hairs. 
and it's caused a major chafing, and any other person in this race would have quit. <laughs> what about, um, you know my meat and two veg? That's quite <laughs> chafed as well. It got like an old, so like polystyrene thing you could wrap around it. I said just put them in a cup. Towns, cities and states seem okay, to go okay. by with every footstep. Even though winning the race wasn't a goal, I still like to keep track of my times each day. Oh dear. Oh dear. Dark run. Oh yeah, the tough day is racing. Uh, 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 <laughs> Konami, jeez. Yeah, never took me a 30 odd case. Yeah. Jeez. No, Konami just went screamed in. So, I was just under 10k an hour. Yeah. Yeah, shop. We'd been through the pain and uncertainty of the first week, the searing heat of the desert, laughter and fun times, the stunning isolation of the Nullarbor Plain but we had still kept a sense of humour. We had conquered self-doubt, experienced unparalleled tragedy, and yet here were Paul and I, just about to achieve our dream of running every step across Australia, the night before the coast we decided to celebrate. Who's been your favourite runner in the race, um, Bernie, apart from me? Oh, but you're yourself excluded. Yeah, obviously, you know. Oh, I have to be uh, Isfan Sipos. Sipos, yeah, yeah. lovely bloke. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we have Paul Ever. How do you feel about getting to the coast tomorrow, Paul? Oh, really? Well. <laughs> 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 have you enjoyed your two months on the Trans Australia race? The what? I don't know everything, Bob. I was never here. <laughs> I don't know who you are. You haven't seen him before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <I'm laughs> Look at my lips, are they kissable yet? Get a zoom on those lips. Hey. This is the night before um, Bob hits the East Coast. Uh, Bob's very excited. <laughs> um, now Bob's going to say a few words. Now you've got to ask me a question. Okay, how, how are you feeling, Bob? Good, mate. <laughs> 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 it's going to be real. It's going to be real. No, Chris, I'm really excited. Really excited. I'm more excited than Big Kev. I'm just having a cup. I'm getting my fruit in for the night. A few apples. Because you've got to keep your fruit. <laughs> Apple a day keeps the doctor away, all that. And um, looking forward to tomorrow. We're going to eight, we're stopping 8Ks short of the coast tomorrow. And then me and um, Paul over there, we're going to jog down with our Indian Ocean water <laughs> and then uh, chuck it in, well, not chuck the bottle in the Pacific, but just okay. dip half of it in the in, um, Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to get half, fill half the bottle with the Pacific Ocean and then oh, make well, a big one. You can't do that, mate. They've got the gate down there to stop you, so like the fruit flies. You can't take the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> mate, did you know that? Any, any Indian Ocean water is confiscated, actually, before it hits in. Seriously? Yeah. Five minutes before the start, and we're just going to run to the coast today, so, yeah! <laughs> South Wales! Well, not yet. Halfway through the stage, we crossed into New South Wales. I think I was a little pleased. Paul summed it up a bit better, as usual. We've run uh, one, over 1,500 k's in Western Australia, over 1,500 in uh, South Australia, over 1,000 in Victoria, and we've got about 300 to go to Canberra, and it feels good. <laughs> You're a legend. Oh dear. Oh, I'm nearly at the coast. Oh dear. 
Hey, Jesse's house. Alright, no worries. Cheers. Oh, jeez. Oh, what a day. Yeah, right? Yeah, we've only got two little here. hills to go. To the yeah, ocean. first. Look at this on video. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you call real suffering. Look. That's a, like, a kingfisher or something. A starling. <laughs> um, well, what can I say? I just looked at the uh, video footage of um, Cottesloe, just when we dipped our water in the Indian Ocean. Yeah! <laughs> and when I got that, then I did an interview after that. I said, well, yeah, the next time we dip this in, it will be in the Pacific Ocean. I honestly never thought I'd get there. And we've got 8K to go now. We're just waiting for Paul to come in. This could be him now. I would imagine it is. And then we're going to have a bit of a rest and we've got 8Ks to go until we've run across the whole continent. Australia. Australia, mate. I can't believe it. I'm just so like, I haven't really thought about it yet. I tried not to think about it too much on the running because I wanted this 8K to be really special. We've got to do this 8K again tomorrow because all the other wusses have stopped here and then they haven't truly run across Australia. So... I'm going to carry this water the whole way. We better be careful not to drink it. Forget it's, um, forget it's uh, Indian Ocean water. And I'm just really psyched. I just can't believe it. I honestly didn't expect to be here. And that footage I just saw, I just saw. <laughs> I just thought, I look like a right faggot. <laughs> I didn't realise. Jeez, I've put on a bit of weight for the race. But now I'm looking chiselled and... Um, Easy on the eyes, you can see. You know, this race hasn't done me much harm. Lips are looking good. And um, I'm just really excited now. We're going to sleep on the beach and it's going to be really good. <laughs> right, we're just about to leave for the coast. Um, how are you feeling, Chris? Oh, pretty good. Real good. <laughs> Real good. <laughs> and who's got the biggest quads out of us two? I think I've won by a, a oh, canter. I think so. Oh, right, Chris, it's getting a bit kinky, isn't it? <laughs> now we're going to do it. And then, where's my water? It's going in the Pacific Ocean. That's all I've got to say at this time of day. It's great. You can smell the ocean, you can see it. Um, it's downhill to the other side of Australia. 4K downhill. <laughs> I was in a daze as we reached the quiet, deserted beach at Eden. I was about to achieve my dream of running every step across Australia, but it didn't feel real. It felt like someone else had run through all that pain, fatigue and emotion. All through the race, I had not thought about this moment. It was far too dangerous to daydream. At the beginning of the race, I'd thought I'd had no chance of making it across. Yet here I was. It was an amazing feeling of empowerment. At that moment, as I ran into the sea, I had the strongest, most intense feeling of accomplishment that I'd ever felt in my entire life. <laughs> oh, this is just awesome. I thought I'd be in tears. It's just so sort of like. Ah! I'm just. Oh my god. How you feeling, Chris? Real good. Real good! I just feel like jumping. <laughs> It'd always been Brian's dream to run across Australia. He had given us the strength and purpose to continue. 
We felt tremendous sadness he couldn't have been with us to share this moment. But though not there in person, he was 100% there with us in spirit. Cheers, mate. Morning, Chris. Morning, well, How are you doing? Right, we're just. <laughs> it's been a bit of a uh, <laughs> change of plans this morning. Because of road safety aspects, the course has now been put forward another 30 odd k's. And so, of course, we want to run every step to Canberra. So we're now running 30, I think it's about 34 because we're not in Eden yet. So we're going to run 34 k's to a place called somewhere for a 12 o'clock start and then well the up. stage is 14 k's today so which is hardly worth doing it but that's another issue we're going to Wollumla Wollumla Whilst it may have been a short easy stage for us for poor Konami it was a run too far after having battled courageously with a stress fracture for a week he unfortunately finished outside the time limit in this stage and was duly disqualified he had come so far with us he would come no further it was a crushing blow for the brave, likeable Japanese man. Such a shame. Paul decided to go for the stage win and try to keep up with the flying Russian, Andre Dirksen. There was also an intriguing battle for fourth between Australian Mick Francis, who amazingly had been nursing a hernia for the whole race, and the likeable Hungarian Mahali Molnar. Only a couple of hours separated them after 62 days. In third place overall was a temperamental Slovenian athlete, Dusan. A previous Trans America winner, he had been unable to keep up with amazing pace set by the two Russians. 